What's up, guys? It's Shitty Panda, and I am back with another episode. Um, so, first things first. Please like. Please subscribe. Um, putting a lot of videos out there and trying to get a lot of attention, and that helps the algorithm. Um, hope you're enjoying them. If you have any comments, please leave comments below. Let me know what you think, where things are lacking, and how I can improve. But, uh, yeah, so where we were, we were about to build out to the iron ore mine. So as you can see up at the top, we have sawmill. We have to go through a valley and out to the iron ore mine. So um, we're first gonna take this train and get it up to our branch line where we started our branch line and begin working our way over to the iron ore mine. So let's do that now. Alright guys, we are here and this is the start. It's going to veer off and head out and around to get to the iron ore mine over there on the other side of that mountain range. And uh, the iron ore mine has to then return and actually come around the sawmill to pick up all that lumber. So we're going to get busy building that now. Oh, enjoy the music. And let me know what you think of it. Comment below, please. I need feedback. guys the finished results are right here um so we got the iron ore mine over there that we came up to and i actually started at the iron ore mine i built out all of these this big yard uh you've got a lot of trains coming in with the lumber um and then you've got a lot of hoppers going out with the iron ore and unfortunately the way this is designed is right over there your iron ore um output is running along the same track and walking right toward it as your um, as your lumber. So unfortunately, you can only unload and load uh, one at a time. So you can't like be loading up one train while unloading another because um, they're both in the same line. 
So uh, this way goes back out and around and connects to a main line in the valley between, so between the sawmill and the freight depot there, you can see there's a little bit of a dip in a valley. Um, so it connects up to there. And that's gonna be a pretty heavy, heavily congested area. So I actually made two tracks there. And um, on either side of the iron ore mine, um, you can see the iron ore mine down at the bottom like this and the valley, it's actually splits and the train tracks go around the valley and connect back up to that main line. Um, and I'll show you right now. We'll fast forward. You won't have to wait long. Um, and I'll see you at the next uh, junction. guys so <clears throat> what we have here is a split and the split is here because to get to the smelter you have to go down this way down that way that i'm facing over there and then if you can see the mountain range way over there you have to fall along the edge of the mountain range and i don't know if you can see that smokestack way over there in the middle of those trees that's a smelter, but it's way down. It's at a very low elevation. So you've got to actually run the train along the edge <laughs> to get it down to the smelter, um, which is very annoying, but <clears throat> it is what it is. Um, so that's how you get to the smelter. And that's why we have these switches here. Um, they will eventually be expansion going to the smelter. Um, but for right now, uh, this takes us back to the sawmill, which is where we need to get this is something I hate. See that switch right there on the bridge? They do not have a solution in the game for transitioning switches on bridges. So I, you used to be able to make this, like I'd turn, you wouldn't have the rail rails, uh, the train tracks on the bridge. You had to do those separately back in the day, <laughs> a year ago. Um, but they don't do that anymore. The train tracks have to come on the bridge. So now I can't have a transition where there's a switch on the bridge without looking weird. Um, so now we have this weird looking thing, but either way it works. Hopefully one day they'll add it. Remember this is early access still. So, and then we go back off to the sawmill in this direction and we'll catch up with you in a moment. I'll fast forward it. All right, guys, so, and this is where the split happens. So this way takes you off and along the, uh, let's see here, the west side, east, west side of the valley. So this takes you along the west side of the valley to the iron ore mine, and the track we just came from was on the east side of the valley. So, and then they turn into uh, double tracks. And these lead off to the sawmill. So let's go over there and I'll catch up with you guys there. Here's our next switch 
that takes us to the sawmill and goes down that way to the sawmill. Um, obviously, I haven't done that. You might be asking, how did you do the double tracks? So um, I guess I can show you how I did the double tracks real quick. And if you guys want like a full tutorial on doing tracks, just let me know and I'll put together a tutorial. Just comment down below. Um, and again, please like and subscribe. Um, I, it helps the algorithm. I know it's annoying to have to keep asking that, but I literally have no subscribers right now, which, you know, it's kind of interesting just putting these videos out into the nether and wondering if anybody's at all interested in them. So this is what you do. Um, I just put these two tracks side by side uh, using the, oh, wrong button, the crossover, 90 degree crossover. So I use the 90 degree crossover, drop them side by side, and then I can come over here and for every spline, so that you're drawing with a spline every time, but for every sp every spline that you draw, right? So this one's got a bit of a curve in it. You have to draw do another one of these, all right? And you can delete them once you've connected them, but you need to connect them first. But for every spline you draw, and watch, you'll see that slight curve that I put in there. That slight curve will be mimicked over here. And again, that's for every spline that you draw. So that was one, one run. And then I can get started on the next run. Oops. So I can just keep going. And then when I come to the next spline termination, I can do it again and again and again. And that's how you do it. And you just connect them up that way. The, the switches are a little bit different. They're not spaced the same distance. So like this switch right here, actually connected end to end. And what's happening is they're actually coming in a little. So these spines out there are a little bit further out than the switches uh, are. So, all right. So let's get over to the sawmill and uh, let's talk about what happens, has to happen over there. Right, guys we are at the sawmill as you can see i got a coincidental area here not so coincidental i tried to line this up as good as possible i'm hoping that'll work we're going to find out the hard way if it doesn't work i'll have to make some adjustments to this area of the track um but i already spaced out the track that runs alongside here so this is all spaced out and ready to go um, this will probably go down We'll probably have a couple sidings here and then we just got to bring it around around under the bridge that's over there and connect it back up and we'll be good to go so um let's get started on that now i'll fast forward of course so you don't need to deal with any of the boringness but this is literally this so this is literally taking three hours to do these track segments they take a long time to set up a track and all that it's pretty fun still. It's still pretty fun, but it's just very time consuming. I wish there were some better tools. Um, these tools that they have now are by far and away better than the tools that we had a year ago. But um, I still wish there were some better tools. Like I wish there was a top down surveying tool where you could drop survey markers and you can connect the track to survey markers, things like that. A little bit more realistic, but um, yeah, let's get started. guys we finally got everything set up um i've got a pair of double tracks 
the main line here coming through. Um, that'll be future expansion. That's going to go down south of here to the oil fields, ironworks, and refinery. Um, but for now, we've got this track going up. Main line. This main line takes us to up to uh, takes a sawmill and the smelter and to the iron ore mine. So that's where this main line goes. It also will eventually take us to the coal mine, um, as well as I'm hoping to get over that mountain pass uh, for the coal mine to get to refinery and ironworks and oil fields. So I'll hopefully have a full loop. But for now, we've got this. And let's take a look at the, at the sawmill. Here we have a transition from the main line. If you're going northbound, taking you off to the sawmill. We also have a transition where it splits up the sawmill to take you. Uh, if you're coming south from the main line, you can go to the sawmill as well. So let's keep going. guys so this is the sawmill layout i came up with um tracks aren't the best placed as i do i might rework these tracks later but this is it bunch of sidings um allow us to store additional cars over here um and pick up our products here and bring them off and over to the mine shaft and um yeah let's let's start loading and see what this looks like guys let's start loading we're gonna load up these front two cars and hopefully we load up these back two cars i don't exactly this one's kind of in the middle it might actually end up loading over here which would kind of stink or it might load up two cars oh it did load up over there that's all right and then we're gonna load up again this is working out nice. Now we do have this problem right here. If you space the, if you park it just right, you can actually have two open cars here and then every other two cars, you can actually properly load them. But um, we didn't get the spacing perfect. So we've got a bit of a problem. But yeah, I'm gonna load these cars up. And um, next time you join us, uh, we're gonna bring them over to the mine and uh, we'll start unloading. Thanks guys. Like and subscribe. Thank you.